The mix bus is often seen as the missing piece of the jigsaw, but in reality it's often a simple way to add the extra 5-10% to 10 to a mix. In this clip, Ackle discusses when he likes to engage his mix bus chain, and how he uses multiple stages of EQ and saturation to take his mix to the next level. Check it out, and enjoy! Uh, I'd probably start finishing the rest of my mix bus stuff then, I think. Awesome. I mean, I really I should start doing the synths. You know, ideal world, I'd do the um, synths and cleans and things like that. But I think I just, after working on things normally, I kind of succumb to just adding stuff to the mix bus to make it sound bigger, or try to. Which is it's quite subtle, it's mainly just making things brighter. Um, and with... So yeah, kind of the opposite of what we were doing with the overheads and everything, everything above 400 hertz, I'm boosting. So I'm, I'm doing it a little bit with the Neve. I'm doing it a little bit with the, uh, what is it called, the spread shred or something on the guitar group, and a little bit on the mix bus. So it's just boosting, you know, the guitars, the overheads a little bit, just giving it a little push. It sounds nice when you boost it up this much, but again, just, just a little bit. Um, that's all that's doing and then add some distortion to the mix bus because why not uh, let's put that over there this is pretty much just a preset I use the mix bus one preset I'll turn the, the high end, the air mount down a little bit. Crank the pento, try it up a little bit, and bring the output down so that it, it's kind of roughly in unison, maybe slightly louder. <clears throat> Again, just adding, just adding a little bit. If we turn like these two on and off, it does start to add up. Clarophonic, probably just for the top end on the silk, yeah. And I've noticed I've got two of the same plugin, so we'll turn that one off. That was an accident. And then I think I've got a little bit of the VSM. This is kind of going to be doing a, a similar thing to the uh, the black box. Uh, so I'm doing it. Okay, so I'm just using this section of it, so it's it's just affecting the low mids, distorting them just in the center, so I've got it set to affect just the mono, uh, the mid side, sorry. Just the mids, the center channel. I just blend it in, it's just trying to give the snare a bit more of a, a bit more welly in the low mids. Very subtle. <clears throat> I sometimes use this side of it uh, f again, like I'm doing with the Neve and the Saturator V2, doing exactly the same thing for the high mids. But I, I didn't need to do it, so that's you can see that's off there. But Yeah, I'm not using it on this mix, but sometimes that's quite a handy little thing. But if we bypass that along with the true iron, you can see what it's doing. Uh, 
I am going to bring the uh, limiter down there because that's hitting into it way too much. So I don't know if you need to adjust anything your end. So yeah, it's making it louder by making it brighter more than anything and having, adding a bit of uh, width. So I know it's kind of a bit silly to be kind of focusing on, you know, it's almost, it's mastering essentially, but I do tend to go to that straight away just to make it sound exciting, um, kind of when I'm halfway through the mix.